This is going to be a study on the subject of lucid dreaming, a way that people can escape reality. And here is a quote from a person who currently practices lucid dreaming and has since he was a young kid. He says, The world of dreams is a doorway into your subconscious mind. I even consider it to be a potential doorway into spiritual realms. However, the thing about your subconscious that you will do well to remember is that it is rather alien territory to your conscious mind and may well contain things that will confuse or even terrify your conscious mind. And in lucid dreaming, many people wish to escape reality when they lay down to sleep. And that's what the young man wanted to do. But while lucid dreaming, you know that you're dreaming, and you can create a fantasy world around you where you act out your own deepest, darkest fantasies. And this is a very common thing. I mean, I'm sure you've probably been in a dream and realized you were dreaming. I mean, when I was younger, I was in I would have dreams and realized I was dreaming and later found out that there was a name for this type of dreaming called lucid dreaming. I've never practiced it personally on purpose, but there are many groups of people and forums on the internet where they give tips and even make a living writing books about lucid dreaming. But I believe lucid dreaming is real. And I believe when you when you try to lucid dream on a constant basis, it can be a gateway to something dark and a gateway to unclean spirits. Everyone has dreams where they may know they're dreaming, but not everyone is desiring to do this on a regular basis where they're seeking to become lucid. Many times people who lucid dream will have dream gods, characters or spirits who show up in their dreams that try to help them. And I believe these could be unclean spirits. So when you seek out to lucid dream, you could be opening yourself up to demonic spirits. If these in fact are true spirits, then they're unclean spirits that you're making contact with. And this goes against scripture because the Lord tells us in Deuteronomy 18... 10 through 11, he writes out all those forbidden practices. And one of those forbidden practices is a consulter with familiar spirits. Notice that says, consulter with familiar spirits in Deuteronomy 18, 11. And if you are talking to devils in your dreams, whether you know it's a devil or not, if it's a spirit, it's probably not, it's obviously not a spirit from God then that's what you're doing. You're consulting with a familiar spirit. And these dream gods could easily be unclean spirits, just like the Lord would come to his men in dreams and visions in the Old Testament. That's the same way devils could come to you in a dream today as an angel of light, as a minister of righteousness. The Lord today doesn't operate this way. He has given us the Bible. And we hear from God through his word, not through dreams and visions. And there are many well-meaning and even sincere people who believe they are getting prophecies through dreams and visions. And anytime you see someone telling you, well, I had this dream and this, this vision, this prophecy came up in my mind, we know this person's lying and he's, ha- he's being a false prophet because you don't get dreams and visions outside of the Bible today. God's not operating operating that way anymore. But there are well-meaning people who do this and sincere people. But these things just don't line up with the book. And on YouTube, you will see many videos that talk about dreams and prophetic dreams, but they are unscriptural. And many people believe they are getting help spiritually from lucid dreaming. And if you're not a born-again Christian, the next thing I'm going to say will probably make you think I'm very narrow-minded and closed-minded. But any spiritual help outside of the Bible and Jesus Christ isn't good spiritual help. But here is a quote from a lucid dreamer. It says, I no longer wanted to lucid dream just so I could fly around and have a lot of sex in my dreams. I was more interested in 
lucid dreams for the sake of my own psychological growth and spiritual transformation. Also, over the years, he says, he worked through most of his anxiety disorders and fears. He'd matured, and it says he probably already begun the process of spiritual development, and that changed him radically. He says, I was no longer a fearful person, so my lucid dreams as an adult turned out to provide me with some of the spiritual learning that I sought from them. He says, I now have quite a few lucid dreaming stories that are amazing, mystical, and awe-inspiring. But I would be, myself, I'd be very weary of seeking spiritual help from something that isn't of God. And there's something called lucid nightmares that are also commonly associated with lucid dreaming, where a person can get stuck in a dream. They know they're dreaming, but it's a terrifying experience. And if you're having bad dreams, it could be because of what you're doing when you're awake. What are you looking at? What are you watching while you're awake? The Bible says in Psalms 101 verse 3, says, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Also, if a person isn't active and doing much work, this could cause them to have these night terrors while they're asleep. Ecclesiastes 5.12 says, The sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eat little or much, but the abundance of the rich will suffer him to, will not suffer him to sleep. So, Someone who's working really hard, they're going to have a good night's sleep. And ever since I got older and started, I had a full-time job. See, I used to have nightmares as a kid, but when I got older, and ever since I've been saved, I've not really had any bad dreams. You know, I go to sleep, and it's good sleep. But now sometimes bad dreams are just going to happen. But if you're having lucid night terrors, maybe that's a sign you're doing something you shouldn't. And false awakenings are also commonly associated with lucid dreaming. A person keeps waking up from the dream, thinking they're awake, but they really aren't awake. And another frightening experience is, is just that, false awakenings. Here is a quote from an experienced lucid dreamer about lucid night terrors and false awakenings. He says, I would fall asleep, begin to dream, and immediately know that I was dreaming. Everything would go fine for a while, then something would happen. The sky would turn red, and Christ was returning to condemn me to hell eternally for my sins. Demons appeared at my back in close pursuit. Terrified, I would wake up in my bedroom in a cold sweat, then I'd feel relieved. It was only a dream. This time, I would think, I'm sure that I'm awake. But then my bedroom window would smash inwards, sending in rain of shattered glass. Someone was coming in through the window with a long knife. He'd waste no time in rushing over to where I was lying, paralyzed, helpless. As I'd begin to feel the very real pain of him stabbing me over and over, I would scream and try to shake free. I'd close my eyes tightly, and then I would wake up, or so I thought. But it would only be the beginning of another scary lucid experience. This would happen over and over again, lasting all night. So people who people lucid dream because they want to be in control, but sometimes you end up with no control whatsoever. But that's a scary experience that happens when someone lucid dreams. Something called sleep paralysis is also associated with lucid dreaming. A person is in a halfway state of being asleep and awake, yet they can't move. And many times they see a black figure, or many times people even see an old woman who people have given the name Old Hag. They feel as if a spirit or force is holding them down. And in the Bible, this guy named Eliphaz the Temanite has a visit from spirits when he is asleep. In the book of Job, Job chapter 4 and verse 12 through 17, it says, Now a thing was secretly brought to me, and mine ear received a little thereof, and thoughts from the visions of the night, when deep sleep falleth on man. Fear came upon me trembling, which made all my bones to shake. Then a spirit passed before my face. The hair of my flesh stood up, it stood still, 
but I could not discern the form thereof. An image was before mine eyes. There was silence, and I heard a voice saying, Shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall the man be more pure than his maker? So this guy, he's laying in bed, about to go to sleep, or is already almost asleep, and he's visited by God. But since God doesn't operate this way anymore, when these types of things happen today, a spirit is visiting you in a dream. It has to be an unclean spirit. People see an evil looking spirit, which they feel is holding them down. And here is a quote from a lucid dreamer about sleep paralysis. He says, you're unable to move. And many have reported hallucinations and feelings of being trapped, even seeing scary dark figures approach them and th threaten them. Some even report these figures trying to harm them while they're laying there paralyzed. This may seem scary, but it's n really nothing to worry about as long as your mindset is right, he says. He says, let's explain. You're laying there, unable to move, because your body has frozen your muscles to prepare you for sleep. He says this happens every night to everyone. It's just when you deliberately keep your mind awake throughout this process, you actually experience the paralysis. End quote. But those who lucid dream will also keep dream journals and write down their dreams. This way it's easier to determine whether they are in a dream when they get in one because many dreams have reoccurring things that happen. Many people even say that they become addicted to lucid dreaming. But it seems the main motive for lucid dreaming is to create a fantasy world where you can almost have two lives. One while you're awake and one while you're asleep. And many people say that they can lucid dream every night and have complete control over everything that happens in the dream. And live a like a movie, but it's in 3D and they're controlling it. People want to do this because they're discontent and unsatisfied with their lives. The Bible says in Proverbs 27.20, The eyes of man are never satisfied. We can't get satisfied. We're always wanting more. Philippians 4.11 says, For I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. People are uncontent. Uh, 1 Timothy 6.8 says, And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. If you're content and you just continuously do what you're supposed to do and work hard, your life will be better and you're not going to have to th sit and wish and fantasize about what you wish your life was. Hebrews 13.5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with what such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So you're being covetous. You're wanting something that's unlawful to have. And that's why you want to have these dreams. You want to act out your deepest, darkest, darkest sinful thoughts. This is just the sinfulness of man that wants to act out things contrary to the Bible. In your dreams, it isn't reality. So you can murder, commit adultery, rob people, be in complete control. And many people would do these things in real life if there wasn't consequences. You know, people aren't like the serial killers that you know of that are so famous. They think the same thoughts, but they don't have enough courage to act out those thoughts. So they just sit and fantasize it and dream it. But if this is what you're doing all night, then you're going to eventually act out those thoughts. It's a very good possibility. Because serial killers say it starts out, they think about it. They watch it in a movie or on TV. And then they just get to a point where that doesn't satisfy them. So they act it out. But these thoughts, these wicked thoughts you're experiencing are a sin. So yes, lucid dreaming is a sin. Because you're acting out all these wicked thoughts. And you're contacting something spiritual that isn't from God. You may be asleep, but you are consciously having wicked thoughts. And Proverbs 24, 9 says, the thought of foolishness is sin. Second Corinthians 10, 5 says, 
casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So Paul wanted to bring every thought he had to be lining up with Jesus Christ in the Bible. And he says in Philippians, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever things, if it be of virtue, and he mentions all these good things, he says that's what you're supposed to think about. And then in Psalms 10.4 it says, The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Genesis 6, 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That's why God destroyed the world with a flood. Every imagination of the thoughts of man's heart was evil. 1 Corinthians 3, 20 says, The Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise that they're vain. Hebrews 4.12, talking about the Word of God, says, For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God knows your thoughts. He speaks against your wicked thoughts in His Word. We need to have our mind and our thoughts to be obedient to God in the Bible. And I'm talking to safe people when I say this because a lost person who's not saved, you're not going to be able to have your thoughts line up with God in the Bible. God is not in your thoughts. But you need to be saved. You need to be born again. And if your dreams revolve around fornication and fantasies of sex perversion, then you're a filthy dreamer. The Bible says in Jude one eight, Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. Matthew 5.28 says, But I say unto you, Whosoever that looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So if you're, you're able to come up in your mind while you're asleep with all these pornographic images, then you're probably placing pornographic images in your mind while you're awake. Lucid dreaming is many times also associated with something called astral projection this is better known as an outer body experience so it's a possibility that dabbling into lucid dreaming could lead into other forms of occultism and you know many occultists who do you know witchcraft and everything else are very interested in lucid dreaming but people want to have the characteristics of a glorified body without coming to jesus christ for salvation today so they will have these lucid dreams. They don't want to get saved and then wait to the rapture and get a glorified body then. I mean, they probably don't even know that you get a, we're going to get a glorified body at the rapture. But if when you, if you get saved, when the Jesus Christ comes back to get us, we're going to get a glorified body that can do all the things that you're doing in the lucid dreams. You know, not the perverted stuff, but the stuff like people want to fly, they want to walk on water, knock down tall buildings, be a superhero, be the greatest in a body that can't be wounded. They want to have a glorified body. So they think up this fantasy reality, fantasy escape from reality in their dream. And here's a quote from a lucid dreamer about bending laws in your lucid dreams. He says it's basically your brain telling you something's not right when you're in the dream and you get scared and you're walking on water and things like that. And it's usually got to do with laws of nature that you know deep within shouldn't work. But obviously in the dream, they can be bent. So that's what people are doing. They're lucid dreaming. They're using these dreams to bend laws, do things that they wish they could do in real life, cheat on their wife, cuss their boss kill somebody, go around and just do anything they want to do. And you know, when they get to what they call mature, then they start getting spiritual growth from it. But if it's not something from the Bible, it's not some, if it's not something from God, 
then you're not fooling around with the Holy Spirit. You're fooling around with an unclean spirit. But this lucid dreaming is just a way that people want to escape reality. Just like a lot of other things that people do today, video games, pornography. People use these things to make a fantasy world. Many times as a young kid, I would play video games. And you can get so into the game that it's like you're not even in this world. You're in the game world. And you use that to escape you know, a life that you don't like. But I believe that lucid dreaming goes against the Bible. I believe it's a dangerous thing. I believe it's a sin, personally. I mean, if if you're not thinking about all these things in the dream and all this stuff, then that's between you and the Lord what you're doing. If you're a Christian and you feel like that's okay, but I, I, I believe it's a sin, I think it's wrong. And... If you're not saved and you're practicing lucid dreaming or if you're just not saved and you've, you're still listening to this study, then the best thing you can do today is get saved. And the Bible tells us the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It tells us how Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross and shed his blood. The Bible says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Jesus Christ shed his blood to pay your sin debt. All he wants you to do is come to him as the guilty sinner that you are. Because you've sinned, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's why you needed a savior. I mean, he didn't come to save somebody who hadn't sinned. He came to save sinners. So if you will humble yourself as a guilty sinner, come to Jesus Christ the best way you know how, not relying on your goodness, your own goodness to save you, but relying on Jesus Christ and what he did for you on the cross, then you can be saved and have eternal life. The Bible makes that very clear, that it's not the good things that we do that will save us. It's simply coming to Jesus Christ the way you are and believing on him. The Bible says in Acts 16, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you've been having filthy, lucid dreams for 50 years, and you come to Jesus Christ right now, He'll save you. It says, Whosoever will. So whosoever will come to Jesus Christ can be saved today. And I hope you'll do that before it's too late.